ago. <laughs> There's another, to me, very disappointing, I guess, cup. It has a kind of a classic sweetness with a little bit of brightness to keep it lively. Some raisiny fruit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe fresh fruit, maybe peach or apricot. And now that I really engage with this coffee, as opposed to mm -hmm. sighing and in resignation, <laughs> I'm getting some peach or apricot. Yeah, there's more here than the last one, definitely. There's the wood, but it's livelier wood, fresher wood, more aromatic wood. I mm -hmm. wouldn't call it cedar. There is definitely what's often called stone fruit because we don't want to commit to one fruit. Right. But that usually includes cherries, apricot, peach. Cherries, anything with a pit. Now there's a note that I'm trying to get to. I guess it's a nut, sweet nut note. I think cashew. I think there's pretty, fairly dis cashew. Maybe I'm inventing it, but uh, see it fairly... Uh, Distinct cashew for me. I get that. I don't know if they make cashew brittle, but if they do, it could be like cashew brittle, <laughs> kind of a sweet cashew. It's a quiet cup. It's showing me something pleasing. Like most people, I'll drink coffee while I'm working, and a sign of a good coffee is a coffee that breaks through my uh, work consciousness <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to bring me into the present and to something like, pleasant. The immediate taste of the cup is pretty disappointing. Too bitter, not sweet. It doesn't maintain the sweetness. It's not like a broken record, but it shows a little bit of salt, salty tendency. Yeah. Yeah, the salt carries all the way into the finish. The nose is yeah. pretty nice on this coffee, but uh, so far the cup doesn't follow through. Live up yeah. to the nose. No, maybe as it cools got a medium body. I'm afraid that this is another ultimately drab supermarket cup. Would you, do you have anything yeah, to say to change that I, assessment? The, <laughs> no, the, the, you know, the moment I taste salt, it does dominate to me. And it's probably one reason the aroma is what saves it. As you know, and anybody watching may know as well, notes like Distinct fruit notes or distinct floral notes are valued because they're, they're associated with life and the kind yeah. of uh, vitality and complexity and life to the cup. And many of these cups, like this one, they just don't have that life and vitality. Yeah. They tend to be dominated by nut notes and wood notes. And the nut notes, I mean, we like nuts. We, we eat a lot of them. I certainly do. But uh, yeah, if I that's, do. those are dominant in the cup, it typically disappoints us. It lacks the liveliness, the lift, the uh, vivacity. <laughs> so we, we maybe yeah. get vivacity from the caffeine in the long term, but we're not getting vivacity from the sensory experience of the coffee. No, to put it in theatrical terms, the nuts are supposed to be th supporting players, not the leads. That's right. To use the language that the, uh, the first coffee we tasted, which is Whole Foods coffee, the fruit, fruit was a, a kind of a citrus, and I think that you can find some uh, stone fruit in a couple of these. It's nice if there's a little bit of citrus in a, in a coffee. It kind of keeps it, at least a medium roasted coffee, it keeps it alive. Kind of a sparkle, it gives it a little sparkle and lift. Well, I'm finished with this sucker. Let's out this, <laughs> who it is, and I, which was really gonna disappoint you and me, I know. Pete's coffee. Dark roast. And it's a, and it's a major Dickinson which has long been one of my favorites of the Pete's. Now that I see, see who it is and see, and they're calling it a dark roast, it's not as aggressively dark as their coffee used to be, but I can taste a, 
the dark roast, and the dark roast is sitting in the coffee and contributing to this sort of muting characteristic. The good thing about uh, peats uh, should be that they it should be fresh. Is there both a, a best buy and a roasted on? No. No, there's a freshness date on it, but I've had several roasters tell me off the cuff that they've been told by supermarkets they, they don't want their roast dates on the packaging. Freshest by 7 15 24. Well, that's two weeks, just about two weeks from this tasting. I, Pete's, I've always been told, was unique in that they absolutely scrupulous and uh, very careful about uh, short, you know, not, not uh, roasting it to go out a year. I'm sure Pete's does a very, has a very rigorous packaging uh, protocol, but I don't know about this one. I think we have to get the oxygen. One percent, one percent oxygen, Kevin. Well, one percent doesn't explain it. No, one percent is good, particularly because it's uh, very close to the uh, the expiration dates. Yep. But that's well within spec of most. Uh, well, right, right. Even no very, problem. Very fussy roasters, so uh, can't be blamed on the on the packaging. No, it's not very interesting coffees, and it's uh, the roast is sitting on the coffees, I assume, without yeah. really expressing a kind of a real roasty, rich roasty excitement. It just sort of. Uh, sitting on the coffees. Very disappointing. Now this is unusual for me, but we have a six coffee briefly because I hate leaving on a note like this, but then we have no control over it, you know, whatever the right. coffees are. The only reason I put it last is because it said dark roast. I didn't want to take the risk of that it would overpower the succeeding coffees. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.